The CPLT-C1 Catapult was produced by Hollis Incorporated in a limited production run between 2561 and 2563 under a special military contract with the Star League. It was officially classified as a close support vehicle, designed as a second line defence with strong offensive capabilities. Early models of the Catapult were equipped with no close support weapons, but the most current versions carry four medium lasers for close support operations. The Catapult is equipped with the reliable Holly missile systems, in this case mounting two racks of 15 LRMs each. This gives the Catapult a range of nearly 630 metres, capable of destroying an enemy from a long distance without risking opposing fire. On those occasions when the mech is engaged at close range, it's more than able to defend itself with its four Martel medium lasers. The mech does lack an effective anti-infantry defence system, however, because it was designed as a second-line fire support system. Also, its lack of manipulative hands is a drawback in close combat situations. The Anderson Propulsion 21 jump jets have been a problem for the Catapult ever since their installation. If used extensively, the system tends to break its conductive housing. This, in turn, vents some of the jet exhaust directly into the mech's interior, leading to overheating. In 2566, the Star League Quartermaster Corps ordered a recall, but many units never came in to receive the replacement systems. Some models are therefore equipped with an Anderson Propulsion 25, which doesn't share the same design difficulties. The mech's emergency pilot escape system is a side-firing hatch instead of the very common roof hatch system. This can cause some damage to the mech warrior, but is generally considered safer overall in emergency situations. When the Star League fell, many of the remaining catapults joined Alexander Kerensky on his exodus, the Capellan Confederation collected most of the catapults that remained in the Inner Sphere, and the Hollis Factory on Cori briefly produced new models and spare parts. At the same time, the Draconis Combine managed to seize a sizable force in their capture of the planet Deeran. The renewed production ended when the Cori Factory was destroyed at the onset of the First Succession War, ensuring the rarity of the catapult during the rest of that bloody era. Entire invasions were commenced simply to seize the remaining number of these mechs, particularly those launched by the Federated Sons against the Confederation. Many variants of this venerable design were produced throughout its lifetime, and the catapult's rarity began to reverse in 3033 when Yori Mechworks was contracted by the DCMS to produce the completely revamped CPLT-K2 and Al Nair. The greatest change to the chassis came later, with the introduction of the CPLT-C3, which swapped out the original's LRMs for the much larger and more powerful artillery missiles. These models were put to excellent use, especially when paired with Ravens, and paved the way for a new design advancement. In the years prior to and after the clan invasion, the Confederacy and Draconis Combine retained the largest number of existing catapults, though many periphery realms would field some of the centuries-old models, and more variants would be produced for decades to come. <laughs>